Chris Reichdahl represents the 22nd Legislative District, which includes Olympia, Tumwater, and Lacey. He serves as Vice Chair of the House Education Committee, as well as a member of the Finance, Higher Education, and Rules Committees. Outside of his work as a legislator, he's employed for the Community and Technical College System as an Associate Director. Earlier in his career, he was a social studies teacher and a soccer coach at Mark Morris High School when AWSP Executive Director Gary Kipp was the high school principal. He was also on the Tumwater School Board prior to being elected to the House of Representatives. His wife Kim is a school counselor and they have two children in elementary schools in Tumwater. Clearly he has a working knowledge of K-12 education and is a friend of principals, which leads us to House Bill 2214, which passed the House on Wednesday and deals with assessment reform. Representative Reichdahl, thanks for joining us today to bring AWSP members up to speed on the bill, which passed yesterday with a strong bipartisan vote of 87 to 7. High school principals are especially interested in this proposal, so let me set the stage with a question and then have you respond, and we'll do that three or four times. First, what will the latest version of the bill do? Well, the latest version of the bill is, uh, is a lot like the original in its uh, core values. We're trying to reduce the number of assessments in the, in the high school years. It deals only with high school. We go from the seven tests we have today down to three. We focus on a Smarter Balance Math, Smarter Balance ELA, and then eventually a science test that will come. Uh, you're pretty familiar with the idea that we have an emergency clause to ensure that the 2,000 students who are in trouble this year as a result of end of course biology will get graduated. Um, but we put in motion this idea of simplification, saving lots of money. And our latest change to it that folks may not have read because of the, the, the latest amendment is that we really direct students' 9th, 10th, and 11th grade math sequence um, in particular based on their 8th grade score. So rather than waiting for a student to struggle in the 11th grade and then having these senior year classes as alternatives, we really actually want to have them score well in the 11th grade assessment. So we put in this idea that if you're struggling after the 8th grade SBAC, we're going to take your three math credits and we're going to try to front load those before you take the 11th grade assessment. So how is that going to impact the work of schools and principals and students? Yeah, so the reason this was 87 to 7 in its vote and is so bipartisan is I think there is a shared interest in not only reducing the number of tests but getting local control back in place. When you tell students uh, in high school we are really shooting for current college readiness and we're using our 11th grade assessment not as a punishing tool but as the last chance to check in with them that empowers schools and principals to build master schedules so that there are senior year courses as the alternative to not passing the test instead of putting them more retakes or more test prep or, or collection of evidence which costs 400 bucks a pop you simply ask them to take more content and that is all about principals and counselors and teachers building really quality master schedules what's the timeline for getting this passed well, we obviously want to do it quickly. Uh, we're, we're, we're on the last day of the first special session. That will be difficult to do, but the House wanted to send a strong signal to the Senate that this is bipartisan, that we have worked this for months and months with lots of stakeholders. The Senate has concerns. Uh, we understand that. We'll keep working with them. And there are those who say we should do science only right now because that's the immediate crisis. But we're trying to help people understand that as the, as the um, expectation goes from a 10th grade math test and of course algebra or geometry to an 11th grade comprehensive assessment math is going to be huge science is this thing today that is sort of the uh, canary in the coal mine but math will be this big explosion in the next two years so we want to get it done in the next 10 days uh, we've really promised people that if we cannot pull off the comprehensive plan we will work on something for science before kids graduate this year but we don't want to settle on the narrow because the big needs help what can principals do to help move this bill forward? Well, it's a great question. We're always in the business of advocacy, and I would say if you're you know, out there in your, in your home high school right now or your home uh, school, you need to be talking with your superintendent uh, about an advocacy strategy. With an 87 to 7 vote in the House, we clearly have spent a lot of time on the issue. It's newer to the Senate. They've had less um, interest in engaging on this this year for a lot of reasons, but we, we want them to engage. So we need principals and superintendents and school leaders around the state to be contacting senators to say 2214 is good for local control, it saves money, it will get more kids graduated because the alternative not passing the 11th grade assessment isn't more tests but coursework and kids know how to do well in coursework and teachers are passionate about teaching so uh, we just need folks out there getting vocal particularly with the Senate. Thanks for joining us today and your insights on the work of K-12 education. We look forward to working with you to move this legislation forward to the governor's desk. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet.